Hi, and welcome to this week's look back at the main news stories so far that have affected the markets. And we're going to start this week with a, a slightly different skew. And many of you will have heard about this in the news, etc. But what does Chat GPT mean for investors? Chat GPT is a product of open AI. Interestingly, Elon Musk was a founder of open AI back in 2015, but has since left the board. Back in 2019, you may remember there was a $1 billion investment from Microsoft in open AI. And in November 2022, OpenAI launched ChatGPT. There's a lot of, lot of letters in there, which is an AI chatbot that can, one, write code, two, answer difficult questions, perhaps a sort of Google alternative, if you like, but the next level up. Three, create scripts, compositions, lyrics, and notes. Four, it can give medical advice, always slight concern taking medical advice off the internet i think but there we go and generate queries for other neural networks now bill gates associates ai artificial intelligence with the new revolution bracket web 3.0 and in fact back in january microsoft announced another 10 billion dollar investment in open ai but what does this mean for investors and for traders ai is unlikely to replace humans in investment decisions yet we never know what the future can hold. But demand for cloud computing services is definitely going to increase with the development of the AI industry. It's a necessity for it. Now that means stocks such as Google, Amazon, Microsoft could be very well positioned on this. And it sort of makes sense why Microsoft is investing quite as much money as they are in it. It could also support stocks such as Nvidia. Now, 22 of 28 analysts have given NVIDIA a buy rating recently, according to tip ranks. And in fact, NVIDIA saw its highest price since May 22 this week, went over $200. And if you compare it to the S&P 500 index, it's actually noticeably stronger. So these latest developments coming out could well impact and are pretty much destined to impact on the big tech stocks. But which way, nobody's quite sure. But it's certainly a story that you need to keep your eyes on moving forwards. Okay, for our second video, we're going to swap back to a commodity and we have a quick look at Brent crude and the fact that Brent crude took a bit of a battering at the start of the week. Now, the last two years, oil, along with other raw material commodities, have been pretty volatile. We've had supply largely controlled with oil by OPEC plus countries, as pretty much has always been the way, which of course gives them lots of bargaining power and an element of control over the prices that we see. Top of that, we've obviously had lockdowns, logistical issues, supply chain issues, curtailment of those supply chains have all added to the volatility. Then we've seen sanctions on the settlement of oil on the accounts of Russia. And obviously the geopolitical concerns happening there. This has caused higher prices, a lot of many people believe, and of course added this volatility in. However, Monday saw a dive in the price of Brent crude. We were looking at it down at 76.92 a barrel compared to the same time the week previously, where it was 82.27. Worth noting now, or earlier on today, in fact, it's around the 82.73. So volatility still abounds there. Why these sudden jumps? Well, uh, a lot of the recovery since the start of the week has been put down to OPEC plus countries curtailing production slightly last month and announcing that they would not be increasing production this month. But if we look at the 30 days in January or the sort of last 30 days of January, it's still down, in fact, 4.3%. Now, we're seeing some reaction to that. Petrol prices at the pump, when you go and fill your car up, have gone down. As much as, you know, the last six months, 50 pence per litre in the UK and 50 cents per litre in, in Europe, but it's still volatile oil. Now, they, they do say volatility is the lifeblood of trading and oil price has certainly been on point when it comes to that old saying the last few weeks. Obviously, we've got situations with the US trying to curtail the increase in price of oil, OPEC plus countries, Russia wanting to see the price of oil go up. So I think it's certainly going to carry on being volatile in the weeks ahead. We're moving markets and we're actually going to have a look at cryptos and Bitcoin in particular, but the underlying theme of the last two videos remains and that's volatility. And in fact, Bitcoin volatility is equaled a five month high for Bitcoin. Now the crypto winter, we spoke about this quite a few times over the last few months, saw a lack of volatility, which is quite unusual in the crypto market, renowned for its, its sudden and big swings and movements and low values for, for a more extended period of time than we've seen. We can put that to 2021, where we saw Bitcoin go above $60,000 
rapidly and, and in quite sharp movements, then fall back off down to below $20,000 and then pretty much repeat that process. But are we starting to see a little bit of volatility coming back again? along with other markets. Well, Sunday night saw Bitcoin against the US dollar make quite a sudden move um, up to about $23,900. Now, it did ease quite quickly and fell back to sort of $23,100. And now we're seeing it just earlier today around the $23,800 mark again. Now, some people were slightly disappointed that it stalled around this 23K mark, but it does demonstrate some kind and some signs of returning volatility. In fact, it was its second highest point for six months and the highest price it's been for five months. Now, obviously, whilst that's a, a small blip, you could say, compared to previous movements, i.e. 2021, it's still worth taking note of compared to what we've seen in the previous six, seven, eight, nine, in fact, potentially the whole of 2022. Now, if volatility does return to crypto markets, um, I mean, for example, the volatility is one reason that only tradable by, by non-retail clients in the UK, you've got to remember your risk management. These sort of sudden movements return that we've seen historically, it's very easy to call out. So risk management is the key for any volatile market. Okay, so finally this week, we're going to look at a story that pretty much been unavoidable and has been spoken about now for the last couple of weeks, and that was the Fed rate decision. Now, the Fed increased its interest rate by 25 basis points yesterday. And as ever, what it said afterwards in terms of the minutes, in terms of their opinion of the Fed, and how it said, has quite a big impact on the market. Now, Powell himself said there was a signs of deflationary process commencing. Now, obviously, most of these interest rate rises have been done to try and curtail inflation. So, great point. There are signs of the deflationary process starting. We also said that wage inflation spiral cannot be allowed to happen. Now, we've got a lot of industrial action in the UK at the moment, for example, with regards to increasing wages. But he's quite firm on that point that he can't let it spiral out of control. He also stated the increase in the interest rate will continue for this year and that he doesn't see cuts in 2023. Now, the market sort of seems to disagree with that, with many traders' activity causing a, a pricing of a, of a cut later this year. But that's still pretty much in the air. And I think a lot of what was said by the Fed was to try and reduce people's expectations of a cut later this year. Now, these sort of statements and, and normally an increase in the interest rates equal a tiny market, of course. But how did the market react to this? Well, dollar index went down and other assets went up. Normally a surprise of a, of, a, of a loosening, a weakening market. But why was that the case? Why don't we see the usual reactions? Well, there was no unpleasant surprise. I think everybody pretty much expected 25 basis points. And there was some fairly softish language used with regards to the economy and where they see it going, and perhaps not being as bad as predictions just a couple of months ago. That's a one one commentator in the US sort of mimic um, Powell slightly with a sort of, well, you know, it's, it, it's, it's not too bad, which a lot of traders took to mean, well, things are potentially better than we think. Now, the current increase is, I think, expected to be one of the last. Uh, the Fed members have been saying, oh, there will be more increases, but most individuals, most traders seem to believe it's certainly one of the last we're going to see. Now, investors certainly seem to perceive that the Fed are in control. Now, they have been asked to use both sides of their mandate with regards to job, etc., and they did reference that quite a lot. But there certainly seems to be an expectation that the timing is going to end soon, and everything will be fine. I'm not sure that's the case. I think obviously there's an awful lot of factors in play there. But it's interesting, the sentiment certainly seems to be backing and easing. We saw Euro dollar break some resistance off the back of 1.10. Will that continue? Will the bulls continue that with the ECB due out today? And in fact, we've just recently had uh, the Bank of England announcement of a 50 basis point raise in interest rates. Again, pretty much what was expected. There's a little bit of sterling weakness before the announcement. Oil was up a little bit up small again. We, we mentioned oil just earlier. US stocks were up as well after the market last night. So that volatility does continue. And what we're seeing now is many, many factors adding into the volatility of markets. It's an interesting time to be involved with the markets. Be careful, do your research, and we wish you the best of luck for the week ahead.